Hi, I'm back with another video. Sitting here, getting my treatment. And we're just waiting on getting that medicine. How's it been? I like to say happy birthday, congratulations, and my sincere condolences. It's nice out, the sun is shining. Have you been enjoying the summer? Or you could say the spring, the summer is until the 21st of June. As we get ready for Juneteenth, how many of you have found out what your nationalities are since we last talked? Or are you still just considered an African American? You know where you come from, where your people came from. Some people are proud to be just black. Some are proud to be African American. I'm proud to be Nigerian American. Knowing that my mother's side is Canary and my father's side is Bantu. What are you? People free to call you whatever. Call you nigga. Call you trash. Call you nothing. And you probably call yourselves the same thing because you don't know where you've been. What your history is. What, what things in life you go through. I like to say congratulations to my nurse Meredith, who had her baby. This is her first treatment that she's not with us. And she had it that Sunday. So we're happy for her. I guess she didn't make it for the holiday. But uh, we like to see new life. Last time we were here, we crushed cancer twice in one day. We always give a standing ovation for our survivors. And if you survived something out there, congratulations to you. I'm here. I'll twist it around because I don't want it to get on. But we're here and we keep going we're gearing up for now for, as I said our sister's trip family reunion excuse me a couple of my favorite people got married and we're going to be going over there to the newlyweds homes to celebrate them. They're also part of our squad so we want to give them a nice shout out for congratulations for their wedding. Also my uh, great niece, great great niece Amir Chanel, she um. I'm going to tell my niece how many times I call her Amir Chanel. Well, her name is Amir Yvonne. She's named after me. My Chanel is named after me and my the daughter I ever had. But to, it rolls off my tongue. <laughs> Oh, that's my sister's uh, message. It rose off my tongue so easily. Her name should have been Amira Chanel. And I'm grateful that she 
named her after me, but Amir Chanel sounds better to me. It just rolls off on time. So she'll always be my little Amir Chanel because she looked just like Chanel. And Chanel looked just like Mickey. But yeah. How many of you had new wild births in your families? Huh? Girls or boys? I like girls. You know why? Because I found out when we have boys, you don't get to see the baby. If they break up, they break up with the family. So we can have all girls and just get me in on the outside, as far as I'm concerned. We get a couple of boys, but mostly I like girls because that means we'll always keep the baby in the family. It's aggravating when you have babies. Excuse me. Born to your sons. If they're not married, they get divorced. And you don't get a chance to see your babies, and they only be grudging the babies. That, that that's crazy. You steal that. That's that blood. How you going on? Separate blood. Just because you have physical custody and our man don't know enough to go and get joint custody and just let her have the physical but you do joint so I can see my, my baby. Stop making seeds and then just letting them be raised by whoever. Well, I'd rather have girl babies. But I, that that came the hard way because coming from a family of girls, I always wanted boys. I wanted four boys. I always said I like the Cartwrights because you had three Cartwrights and then you had the helper Candy, and that made four because Ben thought of him like a son. So I always said I wanted four boys like the parents. Wanted boys. But had I had boys, I might have had three bad daughter in laws. And that wasn't going to work. I would have been the first grandmother in history to take my daughter in law to court so I can get some rights. Because that's aggravating. So, I never want to uh, lose my family. She's old. Miss <laughs> Peterson, could you tell me your birthday? Three six fifty eight. Thank you. This is your Arena Tikin. Your chemo. I was going to ask, what was the name of that drug? Was it Firefox? That the, uh, that was it a man or a lady? was taken in, in the group. It was a fire or something. I wanted to know if anybody here was on that trial. Did, um, let's see, I think it's FHMIJ. We got to call you everything in your BSA and everything. Did they go home with a pump like you? That you know about? They did. They had several treats. Treatments. Uh, it was Fox something. Full Fox, Full Furinox. Because yeah, I asked the lady what time. Hold on, I can go to the cancer place. I think it was in one of our pan can. Yes, yeah, it was. Let me get in there. 
I think when she comes back, little, I can tell her. <laughs> oh, but that's the chair, not me. I never noticed this was a sweat of stripes, ginger ale. Excuse me. It's going to be easier on you now that you don't have to worry about that cold sensitivity. Oh, yes. That would be hard. I can. I just now, what, last weekend, took my gloves and put them up. I have bad gloves because mm. I couldn't. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I couldn't even touch the toilet handle in the middle of the night sometimes. Oh, my God, it would be so cold. I'd have to grab some tissue and put on the handle and flush the toilet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or I'd have to run my fingers up under the warm water real quick. Okay. Yeah, warm water will help with that. Or the heating pad. I was sleeping yep. with my hands in the heating pad wrapped up at night. You you learn to do you, you, little you tricks. Yes. I didn't find it yet, but when I do, and you come back, I'll, yeah, I'll be happy to look yeah. at it and see if it's something I know. If not, we can find out what it is. Okay. Okay, so you know that this is an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll catch you up. Thank you. Okay. Because okay. oh, I answered her text. Let, let, let me, let me just say one thing. <laughs> you seen all this, but you ain't see all this because I got the I didn't have it tilted her way, so you, you know I wanted her to be able to work in privacy. <laughs> but she's a Karen. But she is so sweet. <laughs> Shout out to my sister Karen. And Sharon. I love y'all. Never seen you outside of the little girl pictures. Those are my my, my girls on the mantle. I don't know if I made that a story or not. But remind me to tell you the story of the girls on the mantle. But this is an hour and a half. And then I get my must keep. And we out of here. But I did happen to mention to her. And I want to get a sign up. My too. So I can interview some more people. To... Uh, get their stories. If you would see, if I had my camera and I would just take a, a shot of this U-shaped room filled with people, young, old, middle-aged, all walks of life, all nationalities, all races, Fighting the same fight. And hospitals just like this all over our city. This is just a day in a life. Imagine times how many rooms, time. What, four hospitals? Metro, university. UH 
Chayi to Chayi. And I'm nervous and not on. But rooms just like this. Survivors, warriors, supporters, people in need of a miracle, people in need of hope, people in need of a cure. I had a story yesterday. Hey Michael, did you check your email? I just sent you something. Where are the uh, who is he talking to? A woman was going to be arrested. Hold on a minute. Yeah, yeah. Because now, I mean, you saw the uh, the post that the lady said. You know. There was no evidence. Like I said, it, it, a switch turned. And a switch turned and said that if you had to just deal, live with it, could you deal with it? And I said, oh, yeah. And then I turned around and I'm like, see, it's spooky. It's my spirit level that. Be. That's why I still fast, even though I have to eat. I fast in the morning in prayer. And then after two o'clock, after three, when my husband leaves, I eat. And then I eat dinner when he comes home. So it's nice to know that if you had to, could you? Yeah, and I'm, like I said, he know my name. He called it in 18. So I knew <laughs> that if I never seen him, I heard him. And I know that he know my name. Cause it's like kids when you move. I had that same thing when I was a little girl. I remember we moved from the only house that I knew. And I asked Mama, how would Santa find us if we move? And she said, Santa will always find you when you move. But I uh, got a little headache. Um, so then, uh, but, you just take your. Yeah, I'm gonna eat when I go. Yeah, eat, take your blood pressure. I gotta and cook me some. Get you some. Make water. me a BLT. But I, uh, it's all over the place today. It's been a while. But I feel good. I'm doing good. I need to get back on my job. Because I need to uh, work my Nigerian queen. I need to do my website. I need to put up some pictures. Because I got some new products. But I need to get me a camera. Because I need to you should go. go places and do some interviews. Next week when I get Thursday. When I get this. Oh, this is Tuesday. When I get this bag off. I'm like a couple of phone calls. And once I get this bag off, I have all of the, that following week coming up to be bag free for a minute. And I need to go to the uh, African American, the Dunbar Museum, so I can set up something with those people. And I need to, I want to talk with the councilman. If you've seen this story on Channel 5 about this, uh, the African-American lady with the mental is issues who was getting ready to do some kind of ritual, spiritual ritual she was going to do at Lakeview Cemetery. And the uh, Cleveland Heights police officers broke her arm. They had it on tape. And one police officer after it was all over it said that they should have tased her or possibly shot her. And we're trying to, I was trying to figure out how no one found that alarming. And before I could uh, 
jump on it. They council members are already out for it. I don't understand how the three police officers had already went through training for mentally ill people and you didn't either recognize it, you didn't care to recognize it, that you just abandoned your training. You can't have wrong wearing a badge. Two wrongs don't make a right, but you can't have wrong enforcing the law. What law is the wrong enforcing? Eventually, they're going to enforce their own law, and you can't have that. No matter what the race, what the issue, it's a human element. It's the same reason why we never have a conversation about slavery. We, we just touch all around it. And it still comes back and hits us dead in the face because until you open up and have the conversation, you still going to keep having problems. Even though races are mingling and married and having children and you still haven't had the conversation. We still part of society. We doctors and lawyers and mothers and fathers, but we still never have the conversation. We're politicians, but we still never have the conversation. And until we have that conversation of why you feel African American people are not people, human people, or deserving people, because you used them as chattel and you never changed it. You never changed that mindset. You can't have your Congress and your senators a part of that history still being making laws. You never get nowhere. That's why the world is like it is now. You still got the same people that didn't want to change the world back in the 60s. And here it is 30 years later. 60 years later, they've been in Congress 35 years. You got positions that are for life. No position on earth should be for life but life. Not a judge, not a lawyer, because life changes. So how are you going to have a position for life? That doesn't make sense to have a Supreme Court for life when life changes every 30 years. Come on. Just remember, every time you turn your head and say that doesn't concern me, that, that doesn't bother me, you give power to the enemy. Every vote and every non-vote is a vote for the other side. You have to have license to catch fish. You have to have license to have a dog. You have to have a license to ride a motorcycle. But you don't have to have a license to vote. Because it's the most important, most powerful weapon you have at your disposal. And they want to make sure you don't use it so they make sure it doesn't seem like a big deal. But it's the biggest deal. And we will vote with our party despite our own best interest. If I'm Caucasian and I'm living from hand to mouth, what makes me better than my neighbor who's African American? And we both struck. But you will turn around and put the fight on something else so them two don't come together in their poverty. It's the It's the bad and conquer. I've been studying. That's why I got we're gonna try to use those old ones that I have. I don't know people.
I'm only one person. You have to do what's best for you. I can only do what's best for me. And I've been on this road when this journey started. And at the end of it, I went from I have a dream to all that being cried down and nobody coming behind them until Obama came and became president. That was the biggest thing in the lifetime since Dr. King's assassination. So, what's next? Who next? Your people got to stand for something above anything. You are the hero. Stand up. I mean, you waiting on somebody to come down from the mountaintop. They already here. That's you. Big Mama gone now. Granddad gone. If you didn't learn enough to raise yours on their backs, on their struggle, on what you've seen them go through, have mercy, you might as well. So they say, Jesus, come take the wheel. But me, I'm going to fight. Till I can't no more. I'm going to educate. Now I'm going to talk my ish. Until I can't. It's just my opinion. It's just what I've seen over these last 65 years. Who's going to check me? If it ain't him, the show won't be here. Like, comment, subscribe. Come talk to your church. Let's start the conversation. What you think? Leave a comment. Tell somebody. It's this lady here on YouTube talking about surviving cancer, talking about a heart attacks, her family, her hopes, her dreams, her wishes for her city, her community, her state, her world, her nationality. What's yours? I'm Nigerian. American born, Canary tribe mama, Bantu tribe daddy. Where are you from? Or are you still just going to be called African American? Black. Tell me who you voting for to be the president of Black next. Peace and blessings to you.